plenty of one. They won't want them for Monday. You bet. Just going to collect my pay. Right. I'll check these in. I'll be over to. All drains should be cleared of debris, rotted and flushed through. Yep. In several places, the making good of plaster around pipes, etc., has not been completed. Yep. What are you doing on Saturday? Don't know. Come up to Plumpton with me. Plumpton? The races. You must think I'm mad. What you got against horses? They have a better union than you do. Four minutes' work, then half an hour's tea break. Watch it. Come right, then. it. Yeah. What about holiday money? When you get your holiday. Your sickness benefit. When you're sick. Won't appreciate it then. Well, there they have. Yeah. What are you done with them? Left them in the yard. Marker's into it. Marker? Funny old bird, isn't he? That's some old hen pecking around for corn. Yeah? When did you last see hen? My old fella used to keep him. Got him in the garden. Eight quid an egg, he reckon it cost him. Trouble was, the hens didn't like the railway. <laughs> Tyler. Here, Arthur. Come up to Plumpton with me. When? Saturday. This Saturday? Yeah. I can't. Why not? My nipper. What about him? Well, it's his life saving, his badge, you know. Gonna go and wave the flag. Send the missus. We're all going. Family outing. Sorry. Pathetic. Rather nice. Do you know, there was a time the Albion wouldn't kick off till Arthur was on the terrace. And wrestling. Poor Hove Town all copped it. Darts, cricket. I've seen him castle Jim Parks in a charity match. Now look at him. The door to the dining room binds. Not the only thing that binds. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Oh, no, come in. How's it going? Fine, fine. Got any money for me? How much would you like? Oh, whatever's going. Feels about right. Mr. Kenrick said it's okay about this afternoon. Oh, good. Thanks. What are you going to do with yourself? I'm going to do some shopping. Marker? Yep. You ever kept tens? No. <laughs> Have I missed something? No, I just wondered. So. He is an old pecker, isn't he? That's some old budgie. You're bloody rude. Part of my attraction. Oh, yes. What's all that about this afternoon? He worked on Saturday. Where does Kendrick get him from? That's his business. You may hate me now, but you'll love me in the end. Look, I like free agents. You're already in love. Who with? Yourself. Are you sure, sir? Yes. Yes, why not? How much? That would be three things. Mr. Kenrick's expecting me. Your name, please? Broom. Detective Constable. I'll tell him you're here. He's here. Ask him to come in, will you? Would you like to come in? Yeah. Afternoon, sir. Jenny, send for Arthur Wilson, will you? Right away, Mr. Kenrick. Uh, sit down, Constable. Thank you, The inspector told you the problem. Yes. Uh, Wilson's the one who's lost his pay packet. 
What's the normal pay procedure? Well, I fetch the money from the bank, and Jenny, my secretary, and me, we make up the pay packets. For the men out on site, I arrange something with the foreman. Jenny sees to those working here. How? Well, she walks around with the envelopes in her cardboard box. Oh, it sounds small time, but we ain't George Wimpy, you know. <laughs> Is that how Wilson got his? Uh, no, he was out with another fellow. They collected theirs later. Uh, from her? Uh, yeah, from the office next door. Uh, what time was it? About 12. Mm -hmm. And when did he discover it was missing? Less than an hour ago. He has searched. You mean, did it drop out of his pocket? Yes. Too high and low. What was the exact amount? Uh, 18 pounds, 11 and 4. Hmm? And nobody else is missing anything? Well, not that I've heard. Your inspector said to keep it quiet. I haven't asked around. Uh, come in! Oh, Arthur, this is uh, Detective Constable uh, Broom. Uh, sit down. I'd rather stand. If it's all the same to you, suit yourself. Why not, Mr. Wilson? How long have you been with the firm? Nine years. And nothing like this has happened to you or anybody else here in those nine years? No. Can you pinpoint when it happened? Well, the exact time? That's right. Well, not really. I went out and bought 20 smokes after lunch, had it with me then. We do a sweep on the Australian pools. The fellow was collecting, I went to pay him, it was gone. You collected it about 12? Well, thereabouts. And put it where? In my pocket. Which pocket? This one. Were you wearing the jacket at the time? No. It was warm. What do I need a coat for? Then why didn't you put it in your trousers? Hip pocket, that's the usual place, isn't it? I just didn't, that's all. No reason. Uh, look, can I say something? Of course. Now, look, I don't want you to think I'm kicking a bloke when he's down, because I'm not. Well, that's understood. Yeah, but that money means a lot to me. Gas, electricity, rent, food. I got two kids a grow out of something before you get it home from the shop. I know the problem. Yeah, every bloody penny of that's spoken for. All 4,456 of them. I've counted. What are you trying to tell us? Well, like I said, it never happened before, not in nine years. Go on. Well, last week we took a new bloke on. A jailbird. This week this happens. Looks bloody suspicious to me. Is this true? Yeah. Hey, look, before we go any further, you collected your pay late, right? Right. With somebody else? No. You told me two of them were out on a job together. That's right. Same bloke. Marker. Sorry about the noise. Uh, shoplifters? Yes. We used to have a dog. He died and we couldn't bring ourselves to replace him. Never seen you before. No, no. I, I think this is the first antique shop I've ever been in. Oh, then you're not a collector. Oh, no, no, no. We never used to be. My husband started it as a hobby and then when he retired, whoa, why fossilize? Well, you've got plenty of competition. Oh, fantastic. What are those things called? I never can remember. Tantalus. Ah, yes. It's replacing the things you sell that's so difficult. My husband sometimes does a thousand miles and has one sugar bowl at the end of it. Or perhaps a Persian rug. Lots of soldiers, you know, brought them home after the 1418 war. Like that one. That's a Bacara. Is it? Yes, well, I'm afraid Lino is more in my price bracket. Mind you, I did see something in the window. Yes? Yeah, a little figure. A lady with the watering can. Uh, Dresden, is it? Sits in Ah, shows you how much I know. Oh, I shouldn't worry. There's many a Victorian sofa passing off as Louis Can's settee. <laughs> that her? Yes, yes. Yeah, she's, she's pretty, isn't she? Yeah. Um, how much? Fourteen guineas. Ah. More than you anticipated. Much more. 
It's well, no porcelain's cheap. It's nice work, you know. It's not, well, not Cabot de Monte, of course. But <laughs> Why do you like her? Why? Well, we had something like that at home when I was a kid. Must have been the only thing we had that was worth anything. Oh, prices have soared since then. Why, today, there are people with good collections who ten years ago didn't know Crown Derby from Brighton Rock. Ah, yeah, well, this is more than ten years ago. Early twenties? What, me? Date of birth. Ah, the twenty-three. <laughs> Large family? Just two. But obviously a happy one. No, no, not especially. Well, then, why do you want a reminder of it? Well, I was wondering that myself. <laughs> you know how it is sometimes, oh, for no apparent reason, something you see, something you think, seems to... Oh, I don't know, I can't explain it. Sign you're growing old. Isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Huh. <laughs> do you have one of these? No, no. No, just the bare essentials. <laughs> Oh, and a piano. Luxury. No, it was a very old one. Classics Mondays to Saturdays and hymns only on Sundays. That was when we weren't thumbing through the Bible looking for all the dirty words. Oh, disgraceful. Do you know, do you know a hymn, Son of My Soul? Ooh, very nice hymn. I bet you never heard it sung to the tune of There's a Tavern in the Town. Ooh, don't think I have. No, well, you would have if you'd lived near us. You didn't have to be all that near either. Do it for me. What now? Hmm. Oh, I don't think I can remember the words. Son of my soul, thou saviour dear, it is not night if thou be near. Um, son of my soul, my saviour dear, my saviour dear, it is not night if thou be near, thou be near. But... And that's as far as we were allowed to get. Mother had to pretend to be annoyed. And then one day she stopped pretending and upped and left. And you never saw her again? Oh, yes, yes. But it killed my appetite for happy families. How much did you think that was? Oh, three, four pounds. You could have it for four. Oh, no. No, I couldn't yes, possibly. of course you can. That's one of the joys of earning your own business. You can sell to who you like for what you like. Why, I can... Turn away a dealer who offers me 20, or I can sell it to you for four. But you, but you never make your fortune this way. I'm a little old for fortune making. No, it's very kind, but thank you. I couldn't. Nonsense. I only ask one thing. What's that? If you grow tired of her, bring her back. I'll see if I've got a box. Come and talk to me again. <laughs> Sing me some more hymns. I don't think I know any more. Is anybody in? Hello, I'm in the dining room. I did ring the bell. It's not working. You any good with a screwdriver? Mrs. Mortimer. Yes. Detective Constable Broom. I believe you have a lodger named Marker. Frank Marker? Right. Is he in? Nope. Any idea when he will be? It's usually after six. He's got a half day. Has he? He didn't tell me. He's not been back since lunchtime then? No. Nope. Do you mind if I wait? I suppose not. What's he got? The one room? No, the bridal suite. Forget it. Come in. Mr. Marker? Yeah. Detective Constable Brew. Oh, what kept you so long? 
You were expecting me. Well, I've been out loose, free for two weeks now. Well, comparatively free. What can I do for you? May I? It's very pretty. How much? Four pounds. Four pounds, you say? Four. It says here, 14 guineas. That's where I bought it. Big reduction. Very. Hmm? Four pounds. Still a lot to spend when you only came out of stir two weeks ago. Every time I want to buy something, have I got to come round and clear it with you first? No. Just today I'm interested in. How much money do you have on you? Is that a casual question or an official one? Official. Payday. And you had four pounds without opening this? Obviously. Oh, the lady where I bought that and I seem to get on rather well, so make sure you tell her what I am, aren't you? Ex-con, I mean, make it good. What time did you leave for your half day today? Oh, for heaven's sake. What time? Lunch time. A mate of yours, Arthur Wilson, had his pay packet stolen today at lunch time. And I'm favourite? Yes, of course. Well, go on, search the place. Take the bit apart. Get the carpet up. Well, go on, get on with it. A little more trifle. Oh, I shouldn't. It's up to you. But just a soup some of you. Thank you. Have some cheese. No, thanks. Coffee, then. No, no. You fancy a straw around the local? What? Fancy drink? Oh, sorry, not tonight, Joe. I've got a client to meet. I see. Cheese? Oh, just a taste. Our friend's in a spot of trouble. Be glad of his friends, then, won't he? What's this? Whiskey. I know it should be an old French brandy and stimulating friends, but I don't have any of either. You've heard? He didn't find anything. I didn't do it! I know you didn't. Oh, you know? Now there's fighting talk. I am a fighter. And I'm not? Is that what you're implying? Not implying. Checking? Asking. Yes, well, you know what happens to fighters, don't you? Their legs turn to sawdust. I expect that's what's happened to mine. If yours had sawdust in, they'd be a better shape. All right, you don't like my legs. They are a bit white and friendless. Yeah, a bit like me. Drink your whiskey. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Ah. Sits and offer. Very nice. Well, you're not just a pretty face, are you? I didn't think you'd notice my face. <laughs> no, 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 figure of speech. Oh. But where did you learn about porcelain? My husband used to collect it. Mycin, Dresden, 
Battersea. Battersea? <laughs> Must be the odd one out. <laughs> but where is he now? My husband. Yeah. He, um, moved on. Oh, uh, is that the same as passed over? Uh, I don't think so. But he's dead? Uh, not that I know of. Oh, but I thought... Yes? Well, Mr. Howe said that you were a widow. Ah. Well, what does that mean? It means that's what he was told. I see. A widow taking in paying guests is one thing. A separated woman, well, it's not the same thing at all. Might give some of the guests the wrong idea. Well, surely they'd be more likely to get that from a widow? Widows are available. That scares them off. Romantics are not very brave, you know. Ah. <laughs> well, uh, what did he move on to? Bigger and better things. Ah, that sounds pretty calculating. Oh, it was. Calculation describes him very well. He never made an impulsive gesture in his life. Oh, he married you. Oh, that wasn't impulsive. Oh, in Solihull and Edgebast and I was fine. But when he came into the big time, a muse house in Knightsbridge and publicity puffs in the newspapers, oh, that was something different. It's an old story. Why do you take in ex-prisoners? Why not? It's not an answer, is it? <laughs> I don't know. I have a soft spot for underdogs. Not the best of motives, I'm sure. Ah. Did you stay here all the year round? Mm-hmm. Did you ever see him? No. Oh, I read the occasional bit about him. The last thing I saw, he was going into the London clinic for some tests. Whatever it is, I hope he's got it. <laughs> you see, I'm not a plaster saint, am I? Well, let's just say your halo slipped a bit. Well, chin up. Good night. Sleep tight. Bastard. Hey, hold on. Yeah? I heard about your money. You heard? That's what I said. But I didn't take it. I don't know a thing about it. Well, who says you did? Well, they all do. So do you. Now, look, friend... I'm not your friend, but neither did I take your money. Well, what do you want me to say? I don't want you to say you believe me. OK. I believe you. Now, wait a minute. They're having a whip round to replace it. They won't let me chip in. Do you object? Well, do you? No, I suppose I'd be grateful. Oh. Well, you lost 18 quid. I could lose 18 months. I still say he took it. How did Wilson know Mark had been in prison? I don't know. Uh, I wondered the same thing myself. Well, now, you both knew. Who else did? Nobody. Jenny didn't even know. Well, that's right. Uh, surely you must have done. No, I was away when it was arranged. Well, I know his uh, probation officer, Jim Hull. I was glad to help. Uh, come in, will you? You uh, know Detective Constable uh, Broom? Yes, yes, I do. There's only been one development since last night, Mr. Marker. We found the pay envelope, empty, of course, and deduction slip, in the pocket of your overalls. I wonder where they got to. I think in the circumstances it might be a good idea of you accompanying me to the station. Are you charging me? No. Doesn't mean I won't. Uh, Marker? 
I didn't want you to go before I said something. If you didn't do this, and I don't think you did, I'll stand by you. Thank you, Mr. Kenrick. I know he didn't do it. I mean, why should he? I don't know. He had nothing to gain and everything to lose. You can't be logical about these things, Jenny. Well, you believe him, don't you? Well, you said you believed him. I know what I said. I just didn't want him to go away feeling bad, that's all. What happened to Patty's taxi? Tango four. Tango four. Place your position, Tango four. Kenrick's Yard, Bishop Street. Proceed immediately to A27, one mile beyond Farmer Station. Assist patrolman to bring in suspect for questioning. We'll go. Come on, out you get. Gas meters or phone boxes? Oh, gas meters. <laughs> I should be a cop. How'd you guess? Small town. It's written all over you. Who's your friend? Someone do you see? What's that mean? Detective Constable. Ah, oh, you know the form? Yeah. What's mine? I'm Pixie. Well, he's got teeth full of cake, if that's anything. Cheapskate. My dad buys them wholesale. Don't talk. And put that mirror straight. He had big wheel. Him? Oh, your dad. You're a boiler maker. Sells meat to damn near every supermarket you've ever seen. No wonder you don't like cake. <laughs> what are they looking for? Who knows? What do you do when you're not enjoying yourself? Oh, I always enjoy myself. I'm a student. Do you protest? Oh, all the time. Good luck. Who needs luck? Move over, son. When did you take them off? Last thing, before I left. And you put them straight in your locker? Yeah. You've not made any enemies since you've been there, crossed anybody? I've been working by myself most of the time. I only know a couple of them by name. Hey, just mean you believe me? Oh, I don't say that. Well, what do you say? <laughs> well, if you did it, you're just about the biggest fool to draw breath. To risk going back inside, starting again, all for 18 quid. Well, thank you. I mean, as an ex-con, a real pro, you've got to admit, Leaving the evidence in my own pocket to a bit end of the pier. Particularly as it wasn't there last night. I looked. And what have you got me down here for, then? Well, I wanted to talk to you on your own, and I thought bringing you here like that might loosen somebody's tongue. The guilty parties? Right. Just as you were beginning to impress me. What's wrong? Simple faith. <laughs> Never mind, you're young enough to grow out of it. I think you. Well, look at it this way. Someone, for reasons unknown, steals Wilson's pay packet. Now, as far as we know, it's not a professional job. Oh, do we? Anybody can walk into that yard. 
Come on, come back the next day to plant the evidence. Unlikely. Hmm. Highly. So, it's a casual. Maybe Jenny, Kenrick's secretary. No, you can forget about her. Well, it's casual enough for me. And by now, the word's out that Mark is in the nick. You just traded in 18 months of liberty. Well, you don't think that's going to worry anybody? Well, don't you? No, I don't. Mark goes back in the nick past the potatoes, Fred. Oh, thanks for coming out. I'll leave you together. Well, sorry about this. You're sorry. Could have happened to anybody. Yeah, but it didn't. It happened to me. That's how you're feeling, is it? You're damn right. How would you feel? It's not going to work, is it? I mean, every time somebody drops a couple of bob down the drain, I'll end up in here. But he doesn't think you did it. He said so on the phone. Well, it's a bit late for that. The unclean notice is up. Kendrick will stand by you. Maybe. You know, you're suffering a bit from post-penal depression. Everyone goes through it. I've had them begging me to take them back inside. I mean, things were working till this happened, weren't they? A couple of chair away, he's wanted to kick my head in, otherwise no complaints. Look, we must make this work, Marker. I like the royal we. It isn't the royal we, I mean it. I've said it before, I'm here to help you. Oh. You name it. Why do you smile? Oh, no reason. You making friends? Oh, madly. What about the other fellow in the digs? Oh, getting on like a house on fire. Then the police arrive and the fire goes out. Uh, scared. Thinks he might become involved. His parole's almost over. Yeah, I just see Mrs. Mortimer stacking my things in the street right now. No, no, you can rely on her. I haven't got much alternative, have I? Why, don't you like her? Oh, yeah. There, you see, we're making progress. We've found something Tigger likes. Found something who likes? Tigger. Pooh Corner. I was reading it at a quarter to four this morning. What's the matter? Can't you sleep? I can. No. It's my daughter, whooping cough. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Well, what does Brim want to do with you? It doesn't say. Well, I'll go and find out. There's no point sitting around here. Oh, Mr. Hart? Yep. Nothing. Get a good night's sleep. Again, again. Well, uh, how would ten suit you? It's too early. Okay, eleven, I'm amenable. Well, let's say twelve, shall we? Say what you like, you will anyway. So you pull into the petrol station at twelve, right? Anything you say. You like cake, Sergeant? You've got blood down your shirt. Observant, aren't you? How? How what? How did you get blood down your shirt? I cut myself. How? Sharpening pencils. The cutting. Show me! This was days ago. And you haven't changed your shirt since? Mummy wouldn't like that. Had money, plenty of money. Why? Why just stab him? How old are you, Barry? Eighteen. Mm -hmm. You scared? Scared? What? Well, he started to shout, didn't he? I, I told him to keep quiet. Well, he didn't. So you did it with a screwdriver. You picked it up and... <clears throat> I, I, I gave it to him, yeah. How many well, times? Well, he asked for it. Once! Ask him! Well, if he tells you anything different, he's a liar. Well, you won't tell any lies, Barry. All right, let's go over again. In there. Get me shot. You're not supposed to have heard any of that, you know. Oh, how do you like that? Eighteen years old. Well, what's he done? Killed somebody by the sound of it. Tuning station on the A27. Died in hospital an hour ago. No, it's not true! No! No! Is it for money? Eleven pounds and some green shield stamps. Who needs luck? Well, kids' parents are loaded. And why? When we found him, he was sleeping it off. Sleeping what off? Who knows? 
Anyway, come on, forget it. It's not your problem. Well, what do you want me to do? You go home. Set it out there. Five minutes. It's all right. It's only me. Well, what are you doing back here at this time of day? Well, to coin a phrase, I've been helping the police with their inquiries. They told me to come back here and wait. Do they still think you did it? No, no. Cup of tea. Mm, yeah, love one. Isn't that awful? Yes, yes, I met the boy who's supposed to have done it. Osborne. Who made you say that? Stop, Press. Imagine what his mother must be feeling. To go through all that. Baby, school, adolescence. Murder. You really are awful. Am I? Well, aren't you? I hope not. Oh, well, where there's hope. Anyway, I still feel sorry for the mother. Yeah, well, show me a couple of rich, indulgent parents and a kid showered with every useless gift money can buy and I'll show you a potential problem. Do I sniff socialism? No. Once, maybe. Something to cheer you up. What's that? I've got four French girls coming next week. Oh, la, la. For conversational English. Oh, hey, who mended the bell? Who do you think? But let me go. It might be the advanced party. Don't trouble. A young lady to see you, Mr. Martin. Oh, hello, Jenny. This is Mrs. Mortimer, my landlady. Hello. How do you do? I'll fetch another cup. Thanks. Sit down. I hope you don't mind me coming. No, you'll miss your lunch, though, won't you? I got your address from the file. That's OK. I've been racking my brains to think how I can help. No. Don't get involved. Everything will sort itself out. Yes, but I think I've thought of something. I... Jenny is Mr. Kenrick's secretary. You know Mr. Kenrick where I work? It's all right. You don't have to explain. Milk and sugar, please. Two lumps, please. Oh, what it is to be young. If you need anything, just shout. Perhaps it wasn't such a good idea. Don't worry. Oh, come on, you said you thought of something. Yes, it's childishly simple, so there's probably nothing to it. Well, let's hear it. Well, you left the yard at 12.45. Sounds about right, yeah. Wilson didn't lose his money until after half past one. Oh, is that so? Yes. So if you can find someone to say where you'd been from one o'clock onwards, well, you'd be in the clear. Well, you said you were going shopping. Mm, yes, I did. Well, someone would remember you. I bought a shirt and then I changed my mind. There you are. No, I've already been back. Oh, so I'm wasting my time. No, no, not at all. Well, what do they say? Well, the girl I bought it from wasn't there. Let me ask you something. Do. The first day I came to work, you asked my insurance card, remember? Yes. And you thought it funny there were no stamps on it. Uh, do you know why? Because you'd been in prison. Right. Who told you? It came up this morning with the policeman. And is that the first you ever heard of it? Stamps or no stamps, it's all the same to me. You didn't ever mention it to anybody? Well, that you hadn't any stamps on your car? Yeah. No, why should I? Didn't mean anything then. Oh, I just wondered. I wouldn't explain why the money was stolen. 
Might explain why they try to pin it on me, though. Come to think of it, I might have mentioned it. Yes, I did, definitely. When? When I collected this week's stamps. It was raining and I got a lift. Well, who from? Starkey. Why? But you must have a reason. I did it to give him a fright. Marker? Arthur Wilson. But you've worked together for years. He's your special buddy, ain't he? But that was the point. No, no, you'll have to make it clearer than that. Look, he used to be such a live wire. Always doing things. Now all he does is sit at home like one of his bloody vegetables. And you thought that stealing his wages would change all that? No, of course not. I asked him to come up to Plumpton with me. Oh, he wanted to, but he wouldn't. Dan. So I thought I'd teach him a lesson. Have you still got the money? Oh, yeah, I ain't touched it. What do we do now? See he gets it back? Oh, it's not as simple as that. You not only took the money, you tried to put the blame on somebody else. That's right. What about Marker? Why? Why? Why'd you do it? I panicked. I took it as a joke, and the next thing I knew, the place was swarming with cops. One cop did the trick. Oh, you chose the right bloke, didn't you? Well, what'll happen now? You've been in trouble before. Could be a heavy fine and a good wigging from the magistrate. Maybe a suspended sentence. It's hard to tell. What a mess. I'm sorry. Why the hell didn't you say something about this before? What did he say? I didn't even have to tell him. Why not? He confessed. Oh, but who? Starkey. No. Yes. Well, it worked. What did? Simple faith. Nice morning. Very. Better make the most of it. Won't have many more of these crap ones when the season starts. So we all sand on the stairs and sticky fingers up the banisters. Your sandwiches. Mmm, thank you. Oh, uh. Could I have some of those too? I've got a rather long chain, train journey today. What sort would you like? Oh, anything. You know me. I'm not fussy. Egg and tomato? From your hands, Cordon Bleu. Ah, how are you this morning, old chap? Me. Well, who else? Fine. I'm glad to hear your little problem's been solved. Hmm. News travels. Yes, doesn't it? It could have been dashed awkward for you. Could have. People jump to conclusions. Usually the wrong ones. Mm, don't they? <laughs> but as I was saying to your policeman friend, Marker wouldn't do it, you can depend on that. Oh, you said that, did you? Oh, words to that effect, yes. Dash, good of you. Well, not at all. We've got to stick together. Anyway, I'm a pretty good judge of character. One of the tricks of the trade. Exactly. Did it create problems for you at Kendrick's? Must have been quite a conversation you had. Well, it was pretty thorough, yeah. I'm uh, moving on, you know. So I see the hall's full of your matting pigskin. Oh, yes. Well, it's a permanent address at last. <laughs> First sign of rehabilitation. The probation officer was very chuffed. Be good. Oh, uh, how much do I owe you, Mrs. Mortimer? Parting gift. Oh, thank you. Very kind of you. The taxi number's by the phone. Oh, every need catered for. <laughs> Oh, we've been spoiled here. Well, goodbye, Beth. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Enright. All the best, old chap. Same to you. Thanks for everything, Mr. Dan. I thought so. What? Oh. Curdled. Jeez, 
wait here for you. Huh. You wanted to see me? Oh, uh, sit down. Hello, Mr. Hull. You have a cigarette? No, thanks. About the uh, wages theft. I'm glad to say it's all been cleared up. Yes, all a joke, I hear. In the worst possible taste, I apologize. Yeah, it's okay. All's well that ends well. I'm afraid that's not the end of it. No? No. My two dozen Sussex stalwarts have developed a moral conscience. Right now, you seem to weigh somewhat heavily on that conscience. Go on. Despite the advice of the local union office, they think that your continued presence here will only prove to be a disruptive element. But you told them to go to hell. It's your business. You'll run it the way you see fit. Be reasonable, Marker. I have been. Look where it got me. I'm ashamed. Really? Really. Yes, well, I'm afraid you can't get away with it as easily as that. Oh, no, I've got the Home Office on my side. There's a hot line from his desk to the Home Secretary. Victimization. How about that? You didn't know I had a Negro grandfather, did you? Oh, yes. And a Jewish stepmother. Ah, oh, let's get some racialism going. Put a bit of heat in it. Marker. Look, it's all been said before you come in. That is just what I love. Everything decided behind your back. Start with the corporation dust carts first thing on Monday. But be reasonable. It's one semi-skilled man at a successful business. I'll pay you hundred pounds out of my own pocket. Hush money. Severance pay. Don't they wrap it up in beautiful names? Severance. You're dead right. Clean across here. I don't want your money, Mr. Kenrick. I want your job. I notice you're keeping very quiet. I've already said my piece. You also said, if you remember, I'm here to help you. What I want to know is, when the hell do you start? Thank you. 